My name is Yansup Lee. I'm really excited to be here. I'm honored too, because four years ago at Hot Chips in 2014 with the Risk 5 t-shirt on, I see Scott wearing that. With my 12 colleagues and friends, we introduced Risk 5 to the industry. And I mean, we kind of knew that it was going to be a success, but we didn't really expect this. You know, a thousand people at a summit in four years and 125 institutional Risk 5 Foundation members. I mean, th that's amazing, right? So it's a good time to kind of reflect back the four years that went so far. So let's go look at some things. So first off, number of Risk 5 cores released compared to ARM and MIPS since the inception of the product. Guess which one is Risk 5? Pretty subtle, right? That's the blue one right there. So as an engineer, I look at graphs, and the thing I do is extrapolate, right? So if I extrapolate at the same rate, in the fifth year, we would have more than 70 RISC-V cores in the market. It's pretty amazing. Look at that hockey stick. Second, look at the number of RISC-V Debian packages ported by the community. Guess which one is the RISC-V trend line? Yeah, you got it right. It's, it's a great one right there. So literally starting from the 2018 of this year, we had zero packages ported to RISC-V. With your help, the community's help, we went all the way to 84% in, in 10 months. That's amazing. And as a matter of fact, we have more packages ported to Debian than Itanium. Yay! <laughs> Guess which one is going out of business? And also, we were fortunate to have a YouTube channel called Linus Tech Tips record a video about RISC-V and Sci-5. We had 2.5 million views on YouTube, Guancha, WeChat, Yuku, and CNX. I mean, we're, we're going to a different crowd. I mean, and this is important because this is important for the hardware industry. We have to convince young people that hardware is cool. Because as Dave said, we need a lot more people working on different architectures today. And the good news is we have a second video coming up live today at noon, so I would go watch that very soon. Also at Sci-Fi, we've been going on and doing a global city tour. This is a city tour from Shanghai in China. See, look, at, look how full the room is. We had more than 5,000 people registered to attend the Sci-5 Global City Tours. More than 500 fabulous semiconductor companies contacted Sci-5. I mean, this is at a different scale, and we're, we're making some excitement here. And the, there are a total, total of 22 cities planned, six in India, five in China, two in Korea. I'm sorry, we already did that. One in Japan, one in Brazil. One is planned to be done in Israel and the EMEA in North America is to be announced. It was a good time to kind of look at our core IP development, which happened starting from 2016 Q1 when Sci 5 started. So in Q3 2016, we have announced two products the E31, the S51, RISC 5 cores with Caches and Tim. Huami is a publicly announced design win. In about a year, we worked really hard to make a Linux capable U54 and a Linux coherent multi-core U54 MC standard core IP, and we finally get to talk about it yesterday. Microsemi, a microchip company, had announced an FPGA using the U54 MC. So just think about that, having an FPGA with RISC 5 Linux cores in them, it's pretty exciting. In about a quarter later, we announced cores with floating point units and the coherent multi-cores versions of it. We have a publicly announced design win called FADU. And in Q2 2018, we launched a series of the E2 line, which is the most power and area optimized Sci-Fi RISC-V cores. The publicly announced design wins are eSilicon, Buffalo Labs, and Western Digital had licensed the core designer product for the E2, E3, and S5 core series, where you can customize the standard core IP to your needs. And about a month ago, Jack announced our seven series cores, which are the dual issue in-order core IP product line. 
at the Lindley Conference. We announced, as a matter of fact, six standard cores at the same time, the E7, S7, U7 cores, as well as the coherent multi-core versions of them. We have announced a design win from Buffalo Labs. The benchmark score of the S7, U7 core is 4.9 core mark per megahertz and 2.5 DMOS per megahertz. I'm saying this in front of Dave, who doesn't really like dry stone as, as you know, the core IP benchmarks. Sorry, this is the industry standard I learned. <laughs> Among all the publicly announced design wins, I like to quickly highlight <laughs> the world's first RISC-V-based SSD controller built with the S5 core IP. This is from Fadu. This is a quote from the CEO of Fadu that our core IP compared to others at the time was one third the area, one third the power. And it was a good fit for their product. So if you want to hear more about it, I'm not going to steal Jiho's thunder. Check out Jiho's talk later today at 2.10 PM in this very room to, to hear how it all worked out. So at Sci5, we like to still look improve our RISC-V core IPs and also build development boards for software ecosystem development. This is the FE310 chip with the hi 51 development board. And since then, we taped out a bunch more cores for our E2, E3, S5 series cores and TSMC 180, those are the package chips. We built the FU540 Linux capable chip and the Hi5 Unleash board, and worked with Microsemi to build a Hi5 expansion board for a lot of software development. And thanks to that, we built a pretty vibrant embedded software ecosystem. Starting from Sci5's Freedom Studio, which is bundling a bunch of open source tool chains and Eclipse to build an IDE, we work with third party vendors like Seger, Lauterbach, IR, and Ashling to onboard their debug trace tools and IDE tools. There's a bunch of embedded operating systems working from ExpressLogic, FreeRTOS, Zephyr, Micrium, Riot, Red, Artems, NutX. Also simulation models and tools are available from Imparis. Also we work with Ultrasoc for IP and tooling support for instruction trace. And thanks to all your help, we have a very vibrant open source software ecosystem. All the important tools, such as Binutils, GCC, Newlib, GLibc, are all upstreamed. The operating system ports, Linux, FreeBSD, are all upstreamed. QMU is upstreamed. Most of the RISC-V distribution ports, Debian, Fedora, Open Embedded, OpenWRT, Gen2, are all open source and are going. Quick shout out for everyone who helped uh, get us there, you know, from Sci-Fi, Berkeley, Red Hat, Blue Spec, and Andes. I'd like to show you a demo of the entire stack running together, the software and the hardware. But the exciting news is, as a matter of fact, you've been seeing the demo from the very beginning. This is Google Slides running on a RISC-5 computer, <laughs> High 5 Unleashed, and the expansion board. This is actually, you know, I have to thank you, everyone. So Palmer is going to kind of try to prove that it's actually a RISC-V computer. Is this like a halting problem or something? Like, which, what question do you have to ask? Can you see that? How do you prove that it's a RISC-V computer? OK. <laughs> Yeah, I think people are convinced. Do you think so? Yeah, believe me, it's a real RISC-V computer. And it's pretty cool that now all the browser and all that is working. The browser is not so snappy because it's not jitted yet. So if any of you are experts in Java JIT, you know what to work on, right? So at Sci-5, we, you know, we've been going to everyone who needs RISC-V solutions, and we've been talking to you, and we've been hearing a lot of feedback, a lot of encouragement, a lot of concerns and feedback. And at Sci-Fi, we take your feedback very seriously. And we've been hearing a pretty consistent message from you that we need more customization. I think I don't blame you. You know, as Dave said, the spec int performance has been kind of kind of stable. Um, it's Computers are not getting any faster, so you have to customize, differentiate. 
But also, we've been hearing that customization is too expensive. So building a 16, 14 nanometer chip today coded $320 million, that, that's, that's very expensive. So we've been also hearing that message because if you all remember back in Barcelona, we had a design contest where you know, we would work with you to go realize your idea in silicon. So we actually solicited submissions. So we got 66 exciting submissions to go build a chip from academia and the open source community. We got a bunch of submissions from professors, researchers, students, and hackers. And the range of ideas were IoT, networking, storage, AI, and biomedical applications. And the winner is Professor Robert Boise from University of Nebraska College of Medicine. His idea was to build a global pathogen surveillance sequencing processor. And I have to read this for you because I'm not quite familiar with this device. This device can be used anywhere in the world and can produce real-time pathogen DNA or RNA sequence data from patient samples that scientists and public health workers can use to determine infectious disease transmission patterns during epidemics. According to him, if we go build this as silicon, we will save thousands of lives, if not millions of lives. I'm coding, I'm coding his submission here. So we're going to work with him. As a matter of fact, he started a company recently, so we're going to work with him to go make his silicon idea real. So we're really excited to work with Professor Boise. At Sci-5, taking all that feedback in, we're building a product or a series of products to enable customization at scale. I call this three golden boxes, the Sci-5 design platform. So if you need custom cores, you can use our web interface to enter your core requirements to get customized core RTL out. If you need a little bit more than that, the core IP connected to peripherals, you can enter the subsystem requirements into the system, into the subsystem designer, and you will get the right RTL out. If you need chips all the way, synthesized and placed and routed, so we're building something called the chip designer, to take all your IPs in and your requirements in, all that, to generate prototype silicon and produ production silicon. So this is the first golden box called the Sci-5 Core Designer. This is the web application that you log in and you put all the requirements in of your custom CPU. And that's how Fadu got their one-third area, one-third power. Then you hit review and you can generate your RTL in 24 hours. And as a matter of fact, we launched the beta program today. So if you'd like to get access to it, you can go to sci5.com right now and sign up right away. The third product that I talked about, the Sci-5 Chip Designer, this is the web preview. We're currently building it day and night. So you start from a well-known SOC template where there are a bunch of IPs pre-integrated, Sci-5's core, core IP with a bunch of design share IP that we work with with third-party IP vendors. We integrated everything to which we believe is a good starting point. You can come in, you can change IP configurations, you can add your own IP and all that. And at Sci-Fi, we're integrating the entire stack to go build chips in the cloud. So Sci-Fi is the design layer. We would work with infrastructure companies like Microsoft Azure, work with EDA tool companies like Cadence, and a bunch of design share IP partners. There's about 20 of them today and we would manage the fab relationships with your favorite fab, like TSMC, Samsung, or Global Foundries, and we will work with OSATs to go package and test your, your chip. And we will deliver package tested chip, chips to you. In order to make this platform really successful, we need your help. We need all the good IPs onboarded onto the design platform. To that extent, we started a program called DesignShare, where we go after market verticals. For a given market vertical, there are IPs that you need. So we go integrate, onboard all those IPs up front. And we'll let the customer who needs the custom chip fully leverage all the work we've done already. So if you're a customer, go check out our list, our templates. And if you're an IP vendor who has some cool IP, please come talk to us and work with us to onboard your IP onto our design platform. We will become your secure 
sales channel for you. So in order to make this platform be successful at scale, we have to leverage the cloud infrastructure. So Sci5 has been working with Microsoft and Cadence to enable cloud tapeouts on TSMC. So as a matter of fact, two months back at TSMC OIP, this is TSMC's event. There, um, we, work, we announce our collaboration with Microsoft and Cadence and TSMC there. So if I blow that up, Microsoft and Cadence collaborate with Sci5 to tape out the first full SOC design in TSMC OIP VDE, which is the virtual design environment. So we taped out a variant of the FU540 chip on TSMC 28 to prove out the methodology. And that's, that's the GDS right there. So we're working with a lot of ecosystem partners to really make Sci5 chip design a reality. And we're working day and night for that. So. In conclusion, RISC V is here. Don't worry, it's here. RISC V is a safe choice. You don't need to wonder whether RISC V is going to go away. It's here to stay. As a matter of fact, RISC V is a better option. Dave talked a lot about that. So you will not get fired for choosing RISC V. <laughs> so rest assured. And if you think you're late to the party, you know, using RISC-V at your respective companies, don't worry. sci 5 is here to help you get started with RISC-V today. Thank you very much. I have two minutes and 40 seconds per second for questions. When would I, the question was, when would I get a dev board with U7 series? Guess what we're working on right now? Um, it's going to be sometime in 2019. We're working day and night to enable, um, to enable that, a uh, higher performing develop Linux development board. And you've seen a lot of work um, that's been going in on on-chip or off-chip interconnect that Martin talked about yesterday, tiling over Ethernet, OmniExtend. All that is being, you know, we're considering to put that in silicon too. Maybe I said too much. I guess I don't have a legal department that's going after me. What is the biggest impediment for even faster RISC-V adoption? I think FUD concerns. That's what I tried to address today, that RISC-V is real, RISC-V is here, RISC-V is a safe choice. I think a lot of you are wondering about RISC-V, whether the ecosystem is mature enough, whether is, is it OK that we select RISC-V for my next product? I think it's that concern. And I, I'm trying to address that today by telling you that there's a lot of people working on RISC-V. And as a matter of fact, the reason why it's stronger is because you can go work on RISC-V. And there's a bunch of people here in the ecosystem that are putting a lot of effort, their sweat, their soul into the work. So yeah, I mean, Let's go make RISC-V a reality all together. <laughs>